But yeah, there's no chair and no guillotine, a plot, terrible manga adaptation. If they had even taken like tiny little smidges from that uh, manga, that would have made such a better story. Freaking, yeah, I'll just use a whole bunch of repels. This is the part in the game in Platinum where we were just getting a bazillion shiny Pokemon because we were using the cute charm glitch. What was the thing? The revelation this morning, I knew that I would have a wonderful encounter here today. I'll use my mystify. You don't even step forward? Uh, mystifying psychic powers to pulverize you because it's not like a full a full square that you have uh, have space for there. Hardcore's extra rules like playing on set mode, not using items, and having level caps. Huh. Interesting. Hello, hello, Destine. How are you doing today? Well, I'm going to do our shenanigans here. Gosh darn it, I can't earthquake anybody here. Gosh darn you. Man. Well, I guess I'm, do I guess I'm doing this then. Gosh diggity darn it. Well, smack her. I'll take out the bolt away at least as well, I'll do. But yeah, so I remember when we were doing Stark Mountain and Pokemon Platinum, we were using, we were showing off the cute charm glitch that the Gen 4 games had to uh, get like a bazillion shiny Pokemon here. But it like, didn't it also crash my game a few times in Pokemon Platinum? Because it likes to be weird if you, uh, if you're using the cute charm glitch while you have like a, a partner with Buck here. I think that we got some game crashes. I think we lost like a couple of purple slugmas slash my cargos. Hello, hello, Politico Stefan. Your opinion, one of the more dated feeling aspects of modern Pokemon games campaigns is Pokemon battles usually only being a one-on-one. -on -one. Whereas Pokemon Coliseum's campaign had entirely two-on-two -two battles back in 2003. Yo, freaking, I need to cover Coliseum properly on this channel once. Hold on, hold on, I'll take it here. Where is my freaking, where did I put it? Here it is. Here it is. I never actually beat the game, unfortunately, but I do have my freaking copy of Pokemon Coliseum here, which is flipped because this camera is flipped, so I'm like facing the game, so that uh, my camera had to be on the left side so that it doesn't block the enemy health bars, and if I want to be looking towards the game, the camera had to be flipped 180, so enjoy freaking backwards text, but I still have, oh, well, I can just switch to the uh, full cam here. Pokemon Coliseum. I never, I never got or played XD Gale of Darkness, but I do have a, I do have Coliseum here. Story mode. Gotta save them all. In the what does it say here? In the Ore region, a sinister organization is yada 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 yada. Man, don't you, don't you miss the freaking super tiny GameCube discs? Um. Anyway, I never actually beat Coliseum. I thought it was kind of cool. Um. I never owned a GameCube. I had a Wii that I played like a few GameCube games on. Was the thing. I think the, uh, I so I only had like a small handful of GameCube games since it was just like, oh, I can play these games on my, uh, you know, on my, uh, on my Wii as well. But I think out of my small handful of GameCube games, the only one that I got like super, super into was Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Holy crap, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is so dang good. Oh man, maybe, maybe that's a game I should play on this channel sometime this year is The Thousand Year Door. What a freaking awesome game that is. Uh, but yeah, I, I would like to cover Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness on this channel one day. When I do so, it would probably be on like emulator rather than, you know, actually playing it on my Wii and like going through like the, all the crazy inputs and stuff I'd have to get that set up, which is possible, but it's just freaking hella annoying. And if I did it on emulator, I'd be able to play it in HD, which is quite such nice HD. Um, but yeah, let's see here. You got to get Malos the first in Legends Arceus? Wait, what? Oh, are you just saying, like, I can get, like, Malice's distant ancestor or something like that because, uh, because of how early Legends Arceus is at the timeline and stuff? But yeah, also really like how Legends Arceus handles trade evolution. How does it handle trade evolution? Word Faithful really ruins the gods of Pokemon remakes. Yeah, here it, uh, here it definitely does. People say Faithful, but what Faithful really means is just being excusably bad. It's bad, but here's an excuse for it. So, in my opinion, the word faithful really just is another way to say being excusably bad. Um, yeah, well, uh, I hope that, uh, I do hope that Legends Arceus is good. Again, by the time this that's happening right now is uploaded to YouTube, my freaking Legends Arceus stuff will have already started. But, yeah, here's hoping Legends Arceus is good. What a, what a freaking weird layout this place has. Wait, you can't use Rock Climb because you're traveling with Buck! He's freaking sandbagging me! Oh gosh darn, time to burn through a bazillion repels. There's no trading, like, wait. There's no trading you use a link cable-like item in game? What? Is there an item up here? What the heck is the point? 
But yeah, 2005's Gale of Darkness has a less interesting protagonist than Colosseum and misses the fun underground section from the prior game, but otherwise generally improves upon Colosseum's gameplay. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. I know that XD has like the cool freaking Shadow Lugia. Um, so if you go here, it's just like a single battle. I'm gonna have to fight the other guy anyway. Do Buck and I fight him together? No, we don't. It's just like the same thing that happened with Riley. Um, but yeah, here the experience of Legends Arceus is extremely similar to Breath of the Wild. Will it be as broken as Breath of the Wild? Maybe that's what we should play after this. Because I still want to get through like all the Breath of the Wild shrines before uh, before Breath of the Wild sequel comes out. Maybe uh, maybe we finish this stuff in Stark Mountain and then we just switch to Breath of the Wild. Now nah, I, I might still do freaking Explorers of Sky. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Here the battles on Legends Arceus are insanely amazing. That's good to hear. I mean, Pokemon is like one of those things where it's like, you know, no matter how good or bad the actual game itself is, at least the one thing that will remain true for Pokemon is, you know, the music's always going to be incredible, is a thing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I finally finished your Pokemon and see you agree. Good video, by the way, and congrats on that 10k. I appreciate it, Cernal. How are you doing today? And when you say Pokemon essay, do you mean the one that was from, like, nearly a year ago? That's like the, uh, super big video on the channel or the one that was published yesterday that's like the freaking two hour 20 minute thing that i lost my mind over making for the past couple months because um, <laughs> now as of now i have two pokemon essays i guess three if you count uh the pokemon machine don't you want the two hour one gotcha gotcha i appreciate you checking out that freaking insanely long video i know that it's a freaking you know a long commitment of a video to go through when i started making that freaking essay i was not expecting on it being that long i thought at most at most i thought that video would be like you know an hour to like an hour 20 minutes at the longest and that wound up being freaking two hours and 20 minutes and <laughs> but i am mostly glad about like the way that turned out and stuff but yeah i see them both technically well nice, nice. i do appreciate you uh tuning into those because yeah they are uh they are long videos and i feel like uh I feel like I might potentially have to take a break from doing videos that long and I might start doing like some more short form video essays in the near future. Both because it's like easier to watch and uh, for like my own mental state and stuff. I might potentially do one in that style for Legends, which again, hopefully it's good. I really, really hope Legends Arceus is a good game. We shall see. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll do one like that for Legends because so far the uh, Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl essay seems to be doing pretty well for itself. So it's like, oh, for for the sake of like continuing to grow said channel might not be a bad idea to do one on legends after all so we shall see but hopefully hopefully in that one i'll have more positive things to say than negative things hopefully but we'll see we shall see there could be any time to do a round of mario party superstars or are you done with that game i still have like freaking nerds to rematch in that as well like uh I still need to do another, I still need to play that game with Snivy's is another thing I need to do. Snivy's is a, a YouTuber that does Pokemon remixes. And we played Smash a while back for an episode of Creators Collide. And he was like, next time we're doing Mario Party. And uh, ever since then, we've uh, we've kind of joked about hopping into Mario Party and like the new Mario Party being the excuse to do that. So at some point, gosh darn you Tauros. At some point I do need to reach out to Snivy's and like actually organize things properly for uh <laughs> for mario party with him for sure is what i gotta do um i know that he's probably pretty busy he's getting ready to release like a whole nother album of his uh of his universe stuff is what he's getting ready to do so he might be pretty busy but i need to play with him at some point and i'm freaking down for doing more but i am generally down for doing more mario party stuff with some uh some some other friendos and whatnot if you want to hop into some mario party at some point here at some point you're guzma i gotta rematch that carbian nerd at some point as well the uh the director for uh, uh dark deity that indie game dark deity he i think he mentioned that he was picking up the new mario party and i kind of uh, sure you can learn hydro pump i was mentioning like hey if you want to hop into freaking sh now nah, I'll, I'll just not then you all hop into some shenanigans at some point could do that i could always reach out to freaking dark deities director again and be like hey can i challenge you to mario party still um, <laughs> maybe maybe so that's a that's another possibility technically what type is dawn found again ground type or something like that i think i don't know i'm just gonna send out kenway i guess but yeah let's see here it was long but entertaining but yeah and yeah the, how the pokemon lost his magic video at 45 minutes was good that's not too long at all yeah like maybe maybe i should do something of about that length for legends it depends on how much i'd have to say for legends 
maybe something along those lines is what I could try out. The freaking how Pokemon lost his magic video has been like the most flamed I've gotten for like any video I've ever made. Um, like I've uh, I very briefly mentioned it during something Rob's before where I even had like a freaking group of kiddos that like made their like new life goal to like you know seek me out in whatever form they can to be constantly constantly saying like how awful this youtuber is how dare he say such things about pokemon um but yeah that was a uh that was a thing that happened that uh i think is resolved now after over a month of them continuously trying to like reach out to me at every twist and turn um but yeah, <laughs> that's the internet you're never good enough, but you are. I appreciate that there, but yeah, it can be the internet sometimes. And that's also like the freaking, the life of freaking content creation kind of stuff is, you know, whatever opinion you'll have on a video game, there's always going to be those who disagree with it. And some who like really, really, really hate you for having such an opinion in the first place, I guess, is the thing. But yeah, super excited to hear your thoughts on Arceus. I really hope it's a good game. <laughs> I really, really hope. Right now, I'm kind of concerned because, uh, you know, the visuals of it are questionable thus far, and it very much feels like uh, the different aspects of it are designed by, like, different teams, which they probably are. That's probably the reason why. Like, uh, there was a there was a thing, Bob, where in one of my game design classes at university, we got to uh, tour the game studio of, uh, of Improbable, which I believe now is going by, like, Inflection Games rather than Improbable, but, like, either, either or. Um, and we, uh, we got a little bit of a presentation on game design there from one of the, uh, one of the head honchos there and stuff. And one of the, uh, one of the things they told us was, you know, when you've got a, when you're working on a game, you've got a complicated project like a video game that has so many moving parts and you only have so much budget. It's like really important to consider how you want to manage your resources. And it's one of the things that I briefly mentioned in like the BDSP video essay where the example I used was a, what if you want trees in your video game? Do you develop it in-house with your main developers? Do you hire somebody new who comes in for like contract work who uh, is willing to work for cheaper because he's just super passionate about making trees? Or do you uh, or do you hand that to an outsourcing company to uh, make the trees for you so that your main development team can focus on like the more important kind of things going on and whatnot? That was the example that I used in the Brilliant Diamond Shining Pro video essay to describe Ilka. But where I got that analogy from was from freaking improbable telling it to us in a PowerPoint presentation. My concerns with Legends Arceus is it feels like all the different aspects of the game are like designed by different groups is what it kind of feels like. Like it feels like the uh, human models are designed by like one set of designers, the Pokemon models are designed by one set of designers, and the environments are designed by like a different set of designers. So like all these things on their own don't necessarily look super bad, but like combined, it just kind of feels like they don't mishmash together, at least from like the stuff that I've seen. So that's like my biggest concern with Legends Arceus as of yet, is that uh, it kind of feels, it kind of feels like things were made by different groups without enough communication to make their like, to have like a consistent art style and theme around them is what I, uh, is what I'm worried about there. But yeah, would agree. Yeah, it kind of, it feels a little strange looking and whatnot. Um, also, fun fact, the uh, the game that Improbable was developing that we got to see during said tour has recently been revealed. I think it was revealed during the Game Awards. It's called Nightingale, and uh, it seems pretty interesting. I don't think it'd be coming out this year. It'd probably be coming out, like, during some during some future year, most likely. And I'll be covering it on the freaking channel to- Go start it, you dodged it! That's a 95% accurate move! Are you kidding me? Whatever. Played all should take him out. Um... So that'll be an interesting thing, and I'll definitely cover Nightingale on the channel once it's out to, like, you know, see what's going on here locally and whatnot. I also did look into Improbable for, like, summer positions, but I don't have any available for this coming summer, and it made me big sad. It'd be a really cool place to, uh, look into doing summer stuff at. Would've been really neato, but alas. Alas, no such luck. I suspect Legends Arceus will turn out to be decent, but then Game Freak won't repeat the game's features in the future, like Mega Evolutions, unless the game has competitive PvP battles included. The Arceus form would need to be scrapped in order to sustain the series VGC community. That could well be the case. That is a very fair point there. Yeah, I wonder what Legends is going to be like in terms of, a, you know, trading and battling like previous Pokemon games have handled. Like what the formula there is going to be and how, uh, if it can even support a formula and a scene like the VGC at all. That'll be, that'll be very interesting to see.
in terms of the in terms of the VGC, is Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl even the new main thing for the VGC? Or is it still Sword and Shield, what with like, you know, how much more depth and Pokemon Sword and Shield has? Like, I straight up I straight up don't know if this is the game being played competitively or if it's Sword and Shield. But yeah, let's see here. I heard even though the leaks of the game is fun. I mean, that's important. We'll be playing it, but yes, Game Freak has gotten lazy and greedy and they just published it out now with zero quality, it seems. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I do I do hope that Legends Arceus turns out well. And yeah, I have heard about people saying that's fun as well. So like, that's good to, that's good to hear that, you know, people are having fun with that. Because I have not been having fun with, well, I've been having fun like laughing at this game. But uh, <laughs> I haven't really been having a whole lot of fun with Brilliant Diamond Giant Pearl. I've just been covering it for like, you know, review purposes, and for the purposes of making that video, which I'm so glad is out now, and that the past two months of working on it are done. Um, but yeah, there's that, and Sword and Shield, huh? Interesting. Like, I guess that's not too surprising. But where the heck am I going? Where am I going? Also, fun fact about that like video essay, I uh, I got like a version one of it set up and published and I uploaded that to YouTube to like test for monetization and so I could like watch the whole thing through and like make sure that you know I didn't make any mistakes or there's no like holes in the timeline where I forgot to put stuff and it turns out there was so it's a really good thing that I went and checked that so and the monetization was fine on version one of the video essay so the monetization was fine. There was just like a couple brief spots where it was just a black screen where I forgot to like put in footage. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll just go fix that as well. I'll do. So I went into the timeline. I filled in those moments with like the footage where necessary. And I re-rendered it. And I was like, okay, version two. Version two will be the uh, final version here. So I upload that to YouTube. And it's like, you've been copyright claimed. You've been caught to die deed for this, this theme here. Champion Cynthia's theme from Pokemon Black and White, which I didn't even use. But it, for whatever reason, it registered the Smash Bros version of Cynthia's theme as the Pokemon black and white version of Cynthia's theme and said that the copyright holder is like some weird group that I've literally never heard of. Uh, it wasn't listed as like the Pokemon company or Nintendo or anything. It was listed as like APRA CS and MUST CS, whatever those groups are. Um, which are, I did look into it a little bit and apparently they are groups that commonly file like a lot of copyright stuff on behalf of like other companies and stuff, but it's freaking. It was freaking weird. I was like, why did this one get copyright claimed? It's a liter version two is literally the exact same video as version one, apart from like some slight audio levels adjusted and some bits of the footage like filled in. So I was like, is it just like random? Is it like a 50-50 whether I get copyright claimed or not? So I changed one of the audio levels by 1% and re-rendered it and uploaded it to see if version three now would get copyright claimed. And it still did. So I was like, okay, well, I don't know what to do about this. I disputed the claim. And it was like, thanks for disputing the, like, thanks for filing your dispute. You might, uh, the copyright holder now has like 30 days to decide if they want to give you back your monetization or not. And I was like, what the heck? So, so instead I did a new workaround. I just, I just recorded a little additional bit about me talking about the copyright claim for anybody that, uh, that has seen the video knows that in the soundtrack section, there's a little bit where I talk about the copyright claim. And me talking about the copyright claim did manage to change the audio enough that I no longer got copyright claimed. So, you know, freaky, <laughs> it worked. It worked, which I was really, really glad about. There's no copyright claim on the current version. Thank goodness. Uh, unless they change their mind later or something like that. But yeah, that was my, uh, that was my freaking crazy journey towards getting monetization on, uh, on that video. What a massive pain that was, but I'm, you know, it worked out and it had a happy ending. <laughs> so that was the that was the pain of the final bits of that video. But yeah, let's see here. These are a big pass for you. Here's a graphic skin on the original game. Just play the original game. Better yet, play Platinum. Platinum is just a better version there is the thing. Like these are called Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but they feel more like Diamond and Pearl HD is what I feel like a better name for is what I feel like a better name for this would be. Because it literally basically is just the uh, just the original games and like, you know, 3D and stuff here. But yeah, uh, let's see, your favorite form of BDSP is Cyrus Reaction. Spirit Pillar reminds you of PS1 Dr. Cortex from Crash Bandicoot. I like the volcano so much. I have a, uh, I know that I used it in like a thing where Bob somewhere. So I have a, uh, I have a thing where Bob around here. What are you talking about? Uh, hold on, display capture two. You talking about this here? <laughs> This look? <laughs> is this to which you're referring? 
Um, <laughs> how do I get in there? Yes. Okay. Neat. But yeah. Um, but yeah, the cop, the company who is copyright claiming you are thinking, oh shit, they're on to us. Yeah, probably. Gosh dang it. How did this game ship? Let me down the stairs. Okay. Freaking, yeah, use another rappel. I don't know how this game shipped. Um, <laughs> Oh man, I feel whenever I play this game, I feel like wholly exasperated. Like after the stream, I'm just freaking. I'm probably never playing this again. And I'll probably go lend it to like my little cousins if they want to. I'll play it. I was mentioning this to like Guzmo the other day when we. Oh, this out again. There, I was mentioning this to Guzmo the other day when we were like figuring out sorting out the decks here, where uh, I was talking to one of my little cousins the other day about it. And despite them like not you know actually owning the game themselves, both my little cousins, especially the older one was telling me like all about these freaking glitches that are in the this game that I'd never even heard of. He's freaking done his research. It was crazy. All this stuff that I didn't even realize was possible. There we go, there's the exit. So if I wind up lending this to him, it sounds like he'll probably break the game more than I ever did. And that's that's saying something. <laughs> this thing's telling me that the volcano's treasure is just ahead of us. I'd be the toughest there is, besides me. See you around, Armonia. Wait, I just realized, I do I still not have escape ropes? Oh gosh darn, I don't, do I? Oh gosh darn, there's gonna be no easy way out of here. Oh no! Yeah, let's see, original Diamond Pearl games are probably better than this, they might be. They for sure are if the day one patch is out of the question, but 